Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, as was mentioned before, my name is Dennis, Dennis Keegan. I am a Fenton Fellow Mentor at OpenMRS, and I'm super excited that you could join us today. Um, I am going to talk about how to configure the O3 reference application. Um, yeah, so an overview is that O3 uh, has configurability as a guiding principle. Um, if you go through our three docs, you will see in the introduction page that we have various principles that guided the evolution of O3. And configuration is first and foremost amongst those. Um, we expect that OpenMRS is going to be customized by our users and implementers. And to that end, we uh, have brought customization as a forethought, as a forethought in, in the design of O3. Uh, we have two systems purpose built to support configurability in O3. These are the extension system and the configuration system. I'll be speaking in brief about the two of those uh, after this. We have various different levels at which configuration can be applied. Uh, we can have uh, configuration applied to metadata. This regards uh, managing your concepts, your forms, various different programs that your distro supports. Uh, you can configure locations and counter types, uh, amongst other things that relate to metadata. Beyond that, you can also configure the various different modules that your distro depends upon. Um, these modules are basically add-ons that provide additional functionality to the OpenMRS platform that you get out of the box. You can also configure roles and privileges. Uh, you can configure your forms. O3 ships with a custom built form builder that allows you to create form schemas on the fly and has powerful constructs such as validation, uh, tools for customizing the form layout, and, and, and further and, and more and more things related to that. You can also customize your UI, which is the focus of this presentation. You can customize aspects such as your branding, uh, various different menus. You can add or remove buttons or other UI elements from the page. Uh, into the configuration system. So configuration is front and center in the design of O3, as I've mentioned before. Uh, the basic building blocks, as you will have heard last week from Grace, of O3 are front-end modules. We can also refer them to them here as apps. So these apps, each uh, application ships its own configuration schema, and it could be useful just to show you what that looks like. Uh, so if I pop open patient chat, for example, and I go into this conditions app, so generally speaking, inside of each uh, front-end module, you should see a config schema uh, that looks kind of like this. So this should be an object that defines uh, various different properties that are configurable for this uh, app. So in the case of this uh, conditions app, we see that we have a condition concept class UID, which is a concept class of uh, concept class you would uh, obtained from the concept dictionary. So you'd imagine if you're using your own concept dictionary different than the one that the O3 reference reference application ships, you're going to need to modify this you would uh, to match your own. There's also this conditions page size uh, property, which in this case uh, governs the default size for the, this should be the conditions uh, widget, so that when you look at the conditions widget in your UI, you can you can determine the number of table rows that you want to see. This is going to be five out of the box. Uh, if you look through most of these other apps, you'll see that they all define a configuration schema of some sort. Um, yeah, so you can see that these are of varying complexity. I won't delve into this one, but that's just how a config schema looks like for an O3 application. All right, so second to the configuration system is the extension system, which is a foundational building block of O3. Uh, so the extension system basically has two foundational ideas, the idea of slots and extension, where a slot is a place in the UI and an extension is a component that plugs into that slot. 
So the configuration system leverages extensions and extension slots to configure interactions between elements in the UI. What that means is that if you make changes to your configuration schema for your application, you can also see those changes propagated in, in your UI. And I'm going to demonstrate that uh, further on. So yeah, these are the two key ideas to keep in mind, the idea of slots and the idea of extensions. Moving forward, uh, so O3 ships an implemented tools panel. You may have seen it. Uh, there's a toggle that shows up at the bottom of the page. If you click that, you should see this drawer pull up. And this is basically the implemented tools panel. And you can see it has a configuration tab, the start here, and then there's a tab for front-end modules, which basically lists all the front-end modules that are available in your distro. It's possible to turn on and off front-end modules in your distro so that you have only the things you need. So in this case, we can see on this page, we have vitals. So you probably expect to see vitals listed in your front-end modules. And then beyond that, there's also the back-end modules that your application depends on. Uh, you would expect to see things like the fire module here, uh, the REST module, uh, REST web services module, I mean. And then feature flags is an experimental feature that we're working on, which makes it possible to put work uh, that's actively getting worked on, but not yet production ready. Um, you can put those behind a feature flag and make it possible to toggle them on and off uh, as you're developing. So yeah, my main focus today is on the configuration tab and if we look through the various visual elements on this page, we can see that there's a search UI here. Uh, there's also an embedded JSON editor, which we'll see a bit later on. And there's also this UI editor toggle. Uh, when you turn this on and off, it will allow you to see an overlay on various different elements in the UI that show you uh, what extensions are getting rendered in, in that section of the UI. Uh, there's also this, these two buttons, the clear local config button and the download config button. And what this should give you an idea of is that when you're making changes to uh, the application via the uh, implementer tools menu, it's possible to download this config and then persist it somewhere so that you make your configuration persistent. Because otherwise you will lose your changes uh, when you reload, the, when, you, when you restart the app. So. These changes get saved in your browser's local storage, but if you want to persist them uh, further, you would need to download that temporary config. So the implementer tools expose uh, configuration points for the various different front-end modules, as you can see here. And if I expand any one of these, you will see um, we need to log in for that. So let me log in real quick. Sorry. Yeah, if, if you expand any one of these, you are going to see the uh, configuration linked uh, to that. So you, these are all the various different front-end modules that get shipped in your application. There's the embedded JSON editor that I've spoken about. There's also the UI editor, uh, temporary config. And the key thing with the extension system, as I mentioned, is that it gets wired to the extension system so that the changes you make here get propagated in your UI. Cool. So up next, uh, various different uh, configuration properties that are available within the config system. So out of the box, if you have a configuration schema such as this one, and we assume that you don't have anything set in your config schema, so that you have a blank config, there are two keys that are going to be set implicitly on this configuration schema, and those are Number one, display conditions, and number two, translation overhead. So these are two powerful mechanisms uh, for customizing your UI. I'll begin by talking about display conditions. So what display conditions does is it basically accepts a key called privileges, and you can use this to pass in an array of uh, privileges that the user requires to be able to view an extension. So we're seeing here that for you to be able to view all the extensions rendered by the biometrics app, you're going to need to uh, have this privilege. And then similarly, the bottom here for the appointments app, 
you're going to need to be able to have, you're going to need the manage appointments privilege to be able to view uh, various different things in the appointments app. So this, this is a really powerful construct that uh, can allow you to extend role-based access uh, to customize your UI to, to the extent that only various different providers can be able to see different things based on their privileges. And there are implementations that are really built upon this uh, to, to get some powerful customizations in their UI. So up next is uh, translation overrides. So what translation overrides allow you to do is to provide par language uh, overrides for various different translation keys and strings. So if you've used O3 before, you will know that we have uh, internationalized most of the app. So in this case, uh, if you have this end visit label, maybe out of the box, the translation for end visit is end visit, yet checkout and check-in uh, makes more sense for your setting. This is how you'd make the change without needing to modify any any of the front end modules related to visits. So similarly here, you can see that instead of showing vitals and biometrics, maybe you have a request to render anthropometrics instead of biometrics, and this is how you do it. You would need to make a code change in any of our repos uh, if you use this translation over its mechanism. So I'll show you examples further down the line of uh, how these have been used to extend uh, override functionality in O3. So the other thing, uh, yeah, I guess those are the two key things I wanted to talk about. Uh, it's probably time for a demo. So if you want to take part in this demo, uh, participate alongside me, which I highly encourage, uh, please get this link to uh, the slides and then see me on the next side. And also, if you have questions, feel free to stop me at any time uh, or to type them into the chat. Right. Um, I'm having trouble logging in. Yeah, I am logged in. Cool. So if I go back to my slides here, uh, the first thing we're going to take care of is configuring branding. So Let's take this hypothetical situation where we have O3 out of the box and we want to begin by configuring the branding, right? So branding is configured in the style guide front end module that comes out of ESM core. It provides three brand color uh, variables out of the box. We can use hex codes or HTML color names to override these. And for you to be able to do this, you would need to do this, you need to click this toggle here to open the implementer tools panel. And then if I search for style guide, you'll see ESM style guide pop up, pop up here. And I see that the default values for brand color one is this hex code. And then this, this hex code for color two and this hex code for the third color. So if I wish to modify these, I can uh, toggle this JSON editor on. And because I know the name of the front end module is at OpenMRS ESM style guide, I can provide that as a key. And then I can just grab these brand colors that I have in here. So this is a brand color. I'll just be side by side for visibility. This is, uh, yeah, brand color number one. And let's change that to red, right? And then brand color number two, how about blue then? And then, yeah, let's change this to, I don't know, green. Cool. So by providing a JSON config similar to this one, we should be able to override the brand colors uh, shown in the page. If I hit this update button, we see that the once beautiful O3 reference application is now a garish mess because these are not great colors, but you can see the point. Um, and this is something that you can also do just now. If you pull up Dev3, uh, grab this uh, JSON config, 
I will modify these slides later so that the, the various uh, config properties are available as uh, code so that you can copy them. But you can see that here we can use um, we can use both HTML color names and hex codes to modify our branding. So there is a next step here, which unfortunately won't work in this example where we can modify our logo. Um, so if you have an SVG sprite, you can add that in, and I'm going to show you how this is done in, in a different place. If I go to the O3 docs, <clears throat> and then I go to this configuration page, you can see that <clears throat> I have access to a different config schema. I'm just going to search for a file called config.json. Sorry. Um, there is an example from the config schema here. This is the one. All right. So if I search for logo, so this is an example of <clears throat> a configuration schema for a real world implementation. And you can see you can see that they leverage various different properties that I've spoken about before. And the key one we're looking at here is the logo. So if you go back to the O3 reference application and then exit from this JSON editor and search for logo, you'll see that we have um, the logo used in two different places. There's the login app, which you see when you land on the reference application for the first time. And then there's also this logo config that you see here in the nav bar. Um, so if I go into here, you'll see that this, there's various different properties I can override uh, specific to the logo. I can override the source property and provide a path uh, or a URL to an image sprite. Uh, so by default, this is just going to go and grab the OpenMRS sprite. And then I can also provide some alt text in case my uh, my link isn't working. I can also optionally show just a name. Uh, this should be a bit more straightforward, I think. Yes, you can see that changed. And then I can optionally provide a link to redirect to when the logo is clicked. So if, if you want to set up a custom redirect so that when you click on this logo, it takes you somewhere. That's how you do it. So how would this look in a real world um, configuration file? So this, we're seeing here that we're linking to a relative path to this logo, and we're also providing some alt text. So those two should be an example of um, how you can do branding with uh, the implementer tools panel. All right, moving forward uh, after branding, let's talk about translation overrides. So say, uh, you're in O3, you've just popped open the patient chart and you see this conditions dashboard, right? And then say you have a request to change this text from conditions to diseases. There's two different ways you can do this. The first way would be to actually go into the code and change and change the strings for condition. But then because you're doing your own level of customization for your distro, um, one way to do this would be to use the translation overrides mechanism that I spoke about earlier. And this is how this would look like. So if I open the conditions up again, and I go to translations, because as I mentioned before, all of our apps are internationalized. So you will see within each app, there should be a translations directory similar to this one. And basically what you have inside of this translations directory are locale specific or language specific translation files. So if you look at this one, for example, well, fortunately that one isn't translated, but you can see this one has Arabic translations for content in, in the conditions app. Um, this one has Spanish translations and so on and so forth. So what this means is if you change something uh, inside of this English file, say, say you change this text for condition, it should propagate that change across the board. 
And I am going to show you how to do that using um, translation overrides. So I will just go again and pull up the JSON editor. I am going to clear this config. It's cool. And you can see we just reset everything back to the original. And in this case, we're using, we want to target the uh, conditions app. So this is a patient conditions app. All right. And then we're using the translation overrides key. Uh, feel free to play along as well if you have access to the slides. And then we want to modify various different um, translations. So if I go back to my file here, I think the, the, the things I'd be most interested to modify are things that explicitly say conditions. So I guess I'll be modifying these two as well as the empty state because you can see here, we don't have any conditions recorded. So we're just seeing an empty state. Yeah, so this is a text I want to modify. So I already have lost, lost something here by mistake. I already have the requisite config here. So this is the conditions app. I am just going to do this again, translation overrides. Right, then I change condition to disease. Uh, there's also the uppercase version, which does the same thing. And then the empty state text, no conditions to display. And then I'll change this to no disease to display. No disease to display. Cool. We might also want to change the record conditions link. It's included here. No. All right, let's see whether these changes propagate um, ESM patient condition app. I'm just checking through this config to make sure. Oh yeah, I forgot something. So because translation overrides are governed by locale, the top level key for this config has to be an available locale. So because we we're modifying uh, translations for English, this is what we're going to do. And if I hit reload, I should have picked up. It looks like it did not. You see, just make sure I have everything wired up correctly. Mm -hmm. Still there. Yeah, anyone who's ever done live coding will commiserate with me now that my changes are not getting picked up. Yeah, I don't know why that did work. Should have, because it did in my uh, I demo just before. So oh. either way, that's how you use the translation overrides mechanism. And you can see this is quite useful, especially in situations where you're using multiple locale, such as this one. Uh, so you can see, that this is a config for the registration app. And you can see that we're providing custom headers here for various different things, custom, custom uh, overrides for various different things. And these are localized to both English and Khmer. And you can see that this is a pattern that's used quite liberally. Yeah, so that's translation overrides. All right, um, yeah, I think I'll go back to this one to figure out why I can get it working the first time. But in summary, translation overrides is a mechanism to override translation strings uh, without needing to modify code, right? And then, so the next thing we could do uh, using the configuration system is removing or adding apps. Um, via config. So if I go back here, uh, I'm just going to clear everything out. Um, our configuration schema goes 
into the storage tab and then under local storage we're going to have a temporary config store so i'm just going to delete that reload the page make sure we're starting from a clean slate and in this case um i am going to go to the home page when i click on this app menu switcher i will see that there's three links system administration dispensing and fast data entry app because these are extensions and i can verify that these are extensions by using the ui editor mode when i toggle this on i see that this is a app menu and i see that this is an app menu slot and all of these extensions are getting rendered in this app menu slot all right so i'm going i'm going to target this app menu slot to get rid of this dispensing app because hey uh i don't want to worry about uh, dispensing medication for now so how I do that is similar to what we've been doing before. I would just um, go back into my um, JSON editor. And then because the thing I'm targeting is the primary navigation app, and I would know this by going into here and searching for the app menu slot, which I was able to discern from looking at the UI editor. And I see that the app menu slot is available. Uh, I would access it using this top level extension slots key. So let's try and do that via JSON. Uh, open OS ESM primary navigation app. And then we're accessing its extension slots property um, to get the extension slots that are defined inside of this app menu slot. All right, so um, we can also go back into this front end module section. And I don't know if this will show me, um, yeah, I see, I only see the extensions that are listed in here. But the extension I want to target is called, um, sorry, I lost that again. The extension we want to target is called the dispensing app link. So because I know that beforehand, I am just going to use my JSON editor to get rid of that. Uh, level key extension slots. And then the extension we're the extension slot we're targeting is the app menu slot. And then each extension slot has various different properties, one of which is remove and remove is an array and any extensions specified in this remove array will be removed from the page. So if I hit update, come back here, we see that we no longer have this dispensing app link, which is cool. So if I want to persist this in my config, all I'd need to do is download my local config I get this temporary config.json file and I can use that. This is how that's this is how this would look. And then based on whether I am doing distro level configuration, I could add this config elsewhere and then persist it in this way. Cool. All right. Meanwhile, I will go back here to the patient chart and show you how. When I toggle this UI editor on, it will give me an overview of all the extension slots and extensions that get rendered into this page. So here on the left, uh, for example, these are the various different navigation links uh, that the patient chat uh, exposes, and these get rendered into this patient chat dashboard slot. Um, this is a patient banner tag slot. So you would see things like the active visit tag, or a deceased, a deceased tag for a patient who's deceased, or custom visit attributes for things that have been wired up through the uh, visit form. Uh, up top here, we see the breadcrumb slots, and this contains navigational links to various places in the application. On the right, we have the action menu uh, chat item slot. So this has the order basket, the visit note form, and uh, clean call forms workspace. Uh, here we have the, uh, so there's, there's a slot that gets rendered on top of all patients' dashboards. 
And the idea with this one was that we would show patient flags on here, but patient flags is still something that's still under development, so you wouldn't see it here. But yeah, this is uh, this is the uh, UI editor in practice. It's something you can toggle on and off at any time and uh, get a quick overview of uh, what's provided by the application. So you might ask, uh, hey, I would rather not do this via JSON. We have limited ability to modify some of these things using the implementer tools straight out of here. And work is ongoing to try and make um, it possible to modify most things using um, using this UI here. So for example, if I want to change this condition concept class UID, I could, uh, I don't know, search for something like disease and if i find something here this this concept lookup tool that would allow me to modify this um you would straight out of here without needing to write any json it works for straightforward things like uh, number inputs and the like um privileges are yet to be worked on but this is something that's in the pipeline but if you get the idea it's that you should be able as an implementer or developer working on 103 to modify various different aspects of your UI to get great amounts of customizability using the implementer tools panel. And there's also this possibility of using the embedded JSON editor to modify um, things in the UI. As I mentioned before, changes that you make uh, on the fly in this way are temporary. If you wish to um, persist your config uh, you might you you want to follow this guide so if you go to the o3 docs um, and then go into this configuration section you'll see that there's an overview of how you can do this um, so the, the thing you'd want to do here is to is to have a distro level configuration for your application and it, it varies how uh, folks do this but we have an example that we've linked to here for the um, Ozone Cambodia distro. And this is kind of a canonical way to do this. If you if you persist your changes in this way, they will, um, they will if you persist your changes to the server in this way, they will, you will need to modify them on the fly because they will hold. And then you would just need to run O3 as you would, but then what you would see would be very different. Um, and just to give you an example, well, I'm not sure I can show you that, but there's various different uh, implementations that are currently leveraging such approaches to modify or customize their um, implementations. But generally speaking, once you have your own version of um, your front-end module, so similar to, I'm just going to use the, the dispensing app as an example, because this is something that ought to have been built from the template app and you can see any app that's been seeded from the template app is going to have this in the GitHub repo. So you can see that this was generated from the template app. And then the idea is that uh, something in the O3 docs that may or may not have been covered is the import map, which is a core concept of O3. So what gets loaded into the O3 reference application is governed by an import map which is a JSON file that just tells the actual what modules to load and where to load them from. So if you use the O3 distro reference application to build up your distro, you are going to have a file called spa build config.json. And this is going to look something like this. It's going to have a front-end modules key. And then you will see all the front-end modules that are installed in your application listed here. So for you, the application that you've created, say some arbitrary application, is going to need to go into this uh, spa build config file for it to get loaded into your distro. So there's guidance in here about how to set this up uh, inside of this repository. And if you're seeing this for the first time, I'm just going to link to it. But that's kind of the top level overview of what you're going to need um, to include this in your application if you wish to follow the guidance listed in here. 